Welcome back everyone to the first episode of 2020. This is Design Today and I'm your host, Dylan Winspear. It's been a little bit, right? And in that gap, my how things have changed for all of us. I was initially gonna release the first episode of the year back in February after a little family vacation, but one thing after another delayed that first episode. Then word began to spread of this coronavirus stuff, uh, which I knew could disrupt life. Um, And as we began our preparations to hunker down, I spiraled again into some depression and thought, this podcast is a complete waste of time, completely useless if nobody has jobs or if nobody is hiring UX. A couple weeks have passed. I've limited my social media use and have felt much more positive about life. Without dwelling too much on the events of today, I thought with everyone home, what better thing can we do with our time than sharpen our skills? Things will rebound eventually. The world is not over. So let's use this time to better our position in the things to come. If at the very least, let's use this time to distract ourselves from the horrors of the world. So with that, let's move on. What's happened to our family since November? Well, let me focus on that. In the last episode, I mentioned I wanted some time to recenter, spend time with my family, enjoy the holidays, etc. cetera. Uh, that time was well spent. So I thank all of you for allowing me that break. I can summarize these last couple of months into two main topics. The first being self-improvement and the second being artistic inspiration and seeking. To the first point, I needed time to relax and take some time off. 2019 was busy and I allowed my priorities to come completely out of whack. Uh, That resulted in an imbalance of what I morally desired to do and what my actions showed I actually did. I morally wanted to be a better husband and a better father to my kids. I wanted to spend more time with them. I know this life is fragile and no extra time is ever promised to us. I've taken this time and age with my kids for granted. The holidays are a special time, something that's always meant a little extra to me. Uh, And I needed these past couple of months to make sure that they meant something a little extra to my kids as well. It was so worth it. We do celebrate Christmas and the the magic of watching the season unfold in their eyes is priceless. One of my favorite traditions we do in December is we have a family sleepover under the Christmas tree and watch a ton of Christmas movies. We literally pull all the mattresses out of our bedrooms, we lay them on the living room floor, and we have a slumber party. The result is the ultimate wrestling mat, perfect for pillow fights, uh, and a ton of little jokes that came out of it together. Um, Like this, here's my middle son, his name's Sawyer. He's five years old and completely carefree and fearless. He's also a highly active sleeper. Throughout our Christmas sleepover, I woke up multiple times to find his head where his feet were supposed to be, and then later his body completely sideways, uh, and then eventually just on the floor altogether. Other developments in our family? I broke down and we got a puppy. She's a 12-week-old black lab retriever mix. Honestly, I've known this was coming for a while now, but we waited for the kids to get to the right age where they could contribute to the dog chores. I was scheduled to have surgery on my shoulder here in February, and we thought we'd get a dog sometime in the summer after I'd recovered. Then after a series of events, the surgery had been postponed and we couldn't wait any longer to bring a puppy home. We looked at a a handful of different litters, and over the real short period of time, we eventually fell in love with this little lab pup. I'll admit this to you guys, I cried (laughs) holding that puppy. Not like full-blown tears streaming down my face, but like, The eyes definitely got wet, and one may have fallen. Here's the thing. I grew up with a black lab. I clearly remember being a five-year-old in my childhood holding that puppy for the very first time. I've not held a black lab pup like that since, and when we had the opportunity a couple weeks back, I was immediately five years old all over again, and this boyhood excitement overtook me. I'm excited for our family, and I'm especially excited for my kids to have their own childhood experiences with a dog of their own. I know this probably means very little to you, but to watch and be part of their childhood memories is something that I want to continue to strive to be better at. My encouragement for you, don't get lost in the hustle of, quote, the next step, and don't forget to live in the present. 
Tell the ones close to you that you love them. Be quick to forgive and be quick to say sorry. Live in the present. These last couple of months have also been really inspiring. Hopefully you know me well enough to know that this time uh, that passed, I didn't just take it for granted and sit on the couch, play video games and binge Netflix. Uh, However, I did watch the second season of You on Netflix and it is phenomenal. Uh, With your time at home, you should check it out if you haven't already. I also saw a handful of movies that inspired me and made me feel human again. I wanted to share a couple of those experiences as well. I'm on the fringe of liking and disliking pop culture. I don't keep up with all the news, but I do try and maintain one foot in the pop culture world just to stay relevant. Who I'm extremely inspired by in pop culture are people like Shia LaBeouf, Demi Lovato, and Kristen Stewart, just to name a few. And don't roll your eyes. They're a good group. Did anyone catch Demi Lovato's performance at the Grammys? It was so powerful. And one of the most powerful things that I've seen come out of Hollywood in a long time. Her song she performed was honest and real. It touched on her personal struggles and how it took a mental toll on her. To be able to open up to the world about those things takes a lot of bravery, and I respect that a ton. I'll drop a link to the performance here in the description. I also fell in love with Shia LaBeouf all over again. It's really geeky, actually. I've watched hours of his movies, uh, both Peanut Butter Falcon and Honey Boy, and I've watched hours of his YouTube content uh, that he's done over the last couple months. Again, what strikes me here is recognizing how vulnerable he's been and sharing deeply personal information and the level of humility he appears to have at this time in his life in comparison to years past. I'm inspired by his character. I'm inspired by the love that he has for his craft. He loves acting for the sake of theater. These little things speak volume to me, and I needed to remember that I do love what I do, and I understand my reasons. If you want to watch something that really hit home for me, uh, it's an interview with Shia Shia LaBeouf and Kristen Stewart, uh, two actors who couldn't give two Fs about Hollywood. I absolutely loved it. Again, I'll drop a link in the description. Guys, I love my career. I love where my career has brought me both as a human being and as a professional. I started to lose that love a little bit as the year came to a close. These things felt more like a chore than a passion. So I took a break and I took three months uh, to recognize that taking a break is okay. Robert Downey Jr. said something on a Joe Rogan interview that inspired me a couple months back. He said, our culture never encourages taking a break. Now, I'm definitely not comparing myself to the great RDJ, but what he said is true. We live in a hustle culture. I, too, have done many episodes on the importance of work and hustling, but don't forget to take a break. The winter is a natural season of slowing down, hibernating, recentering, so I encourage you not to miss that opportunity. You know your limits better than anyone else. Know when you need to slow down and take a break, and when the time is right, pick it back up and get it going again. So let me transition there. I'm ready to pick this up and get it going again. Not only do I need the distraction, but again, this time at home, if you're working remote or if you're, uh, you know, kind of twiddling your thumbs because you're not out and about, let's use this time to sharpen our skills. I'm really excited about what's to come in the next few months with Design Today. First, Design Today has a new home. You can check it out at designtoday.com. There you will find all the episodes uh, up to this point, along with some exciting new developments. There's a Slack group for you to join and contribute to, along with a monthly newsletter uh, that I'm going to be kicking off pretty soon. This newsletter won't be your run-of-the-mill spam. I'm not capable of spamming your email because I just flat out don't have that time. But what I do want uh, to do here is make time for this monthly newsletter with recaps and highlights, events and news, and even promotions. Promotions for what, though, you might ask? I've been working on a couple courses for UX designers as well. Um, This has been for some time now. I've talked about it before. Uh, A few courses, actually. These aren't your standard UX course workshops. There are enough of those online out there already. These don't overlap with the skills you're learning in the classroom either. Instead, they focus on other aspects of UX, uh, things that you guys all know I'm passionate about. 
The first few offerings from Design Today will be design challenges. In this, you will walk away with another portfolio piece and an interview-like design challenge experience under your belt in which you can get feedback on and know where you can improve. Of course, that will be with me, uh, and some time together sounds a lot more social than I've been recently. Other courses that are getting worked on include a career development course and a career prep course, um, as well as a soft skills course for UX designers. The career prep course will be focusing on solidifying your resume, your portfolio, interview skills, and a bonus section for salary negotiation. Each of these sections are going to have some hands-on work, and I'll be directly involved in giving that feedback. The other course, which is taking more time to finish, is the EQ, or soft skills of a UX designer. I've talked about this now for two years, and I've been working on solidifying that message into practical courses, which you can use to improve the areas of your UX uh, design. I could go on talking about this for days, but instead, I'll encourage you to join the community, both the Slack group and the newsletter, to receive updates as we get this going. Special plug to do that soon because I'll be needing a couple individuals to be my guinea pigs as I refine the course. Portions of these courses will be paid portions, and those guinea pigs will get a hefty discount. So if that's of interest to you, reach out, let me know, sign up on Slack, and let's chat there. Um, let's see, what else have I forgotten? Oh, I can't believe I almost forgot this as well. Uh, you might have put together uh, Design Today is a Labor of Love. To this point, I've not made a dime off the podcast, but altogether, I've invested more than just hours and hours of work. There have been equipment costs, software costs, hosting costs, and the list goes on. This is all coming right out of my own pocket. So Design Today, if it's done anything for you, then consider becoming a patron and donating to the show. There are special rewards depending on the tier you choose to donate at. Uh, you can learn more about it again by visiting the community page of designtoday.com. Uh, that again, on the website, all the information is there. This really is the first announcement for that Patreon group, yet I've already had two of you find that Patreon page and become my first two patrons. So a real heartfelt thank you to two of my former Lambda UX students, Brandon Enders and Sarah Ecker. They are two terrific UX design students. Uh, and if you're hiring, you should find them on LinkedIn and give them a shout. Uh, thank you, you two. It means a ton that you've trusted me enough to contribute to this cause. Finally, the last announcements here is to get you jazzed about what's to come on the podcast. The special guest lineup includes the likes of Nir Ayal, author of the book Hooked uh, and his newest book, Indistractable. We've got Catherine Wong, the chief of product at Domo and my good friend and mentor. We've also got Stephen Meller, aka UX Stephen. Uh, from Instagram. Um, he may have actually changed his name recently. I'll have to put that in the, in the description or comments. I don't think it's UX Steven anymore. Uh, but also Doug Collins. Uh, he's Doug Collins UX on Twitter. Those have all been recorded and prepped for release. Oh, and this is sweet. I've also got Michael Janda, author of Burn Your Portfolio and so much other awesome content you can find on Instagram. Uh, we've got a plan to record here in the coming months. Great things are lined up. You don't want to miss it. So make sure you subscribe to be notified when episodes are released. Again, you know that's every Tuesday from this point forward. This is Design Today, and we back.